To God be the glory for the things that he has done. For the Lord is worthy to be praised on tonight. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for just being a God on tonight. We come another night for our effort to get the Bible by our pastor, Pastor Gregory Black. But we all need a word from the Lord on tonight Amen. that will take us through each and every day. Because the word is nothing but deliverance. And the word of God is our burden bearer. Oh, yeah. He's everything that we need from earth to glory. Yes. So on tonight, to get ready, get ready for a great word from our pastor. Pastor Black, and we come forward with our scripture on our song tonight, which took by Sister Joanne Nixon. Follow Sister Joanne Nixon. We have our scripture by Sister Sybil. I'm sorry, by Sister Pearlie Dixon. And our prayer by Sister Sybil Bess. In, in that order, thank you. Come on, let's give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Glory to the Most High God. First, I do give honor to God for my being here. I give honor to my pastor, my first lady. Give honor to Deacon Never. Give honor Amen. to you, you, and you. How many know when there's a praise in the house, you can get anything you oh, want from yeah. God? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. When there's a praise in the temple and a praise in the house, you can usher in the spirit and remove the devil out. God will Starting at the first verse. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Yeah. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Mm -hmm. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. Today, if ye will hear his voice, Harden not your heart as in the day of provocation and in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with the generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. I have read Psalms 95 in its entirety. Amen. 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 
Good evening, good evening. First, I do give all honor to God on this evening, who is the head of our lives. I give honor to Pastor Black, Evangelist Black, and everyone else in their respectful world. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy man in Lord. all the earth. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you right now, Heavenly Father, just as low and humble as we know how. First this afternoon, we praise and we thank you because you are God, the maker and the creator. And we are here because of your goodness, because there is none good but you. We are your people and the sheep of your pastor. Father God, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for last night's sleep and rest. How you touched us right early this morning, God, and woke us up, God. And we were closed in our right mind. The blood still running won't do our thing. Still had the activities of our will. When our name was called, God, we could answer. God, you didn't stop there. We had shelter over our head, food to put on our table, clothes to put on our back. And God, for that, we said, thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank and we praise you because beside you, there is no other. We realize that all of our help and all of our strength comes from you. And we realize on this afternoon, God, that we can do nothing without you. But we know, God, with you, all things are possible. And God, for that, we said thank you. Thank Father God, we realize on this evening, God, that we need you, God, yeah. on every hand, God. Yeah. Trouble on every side, oh, God. Yeah. But you're still God, you're yeah. still good, and you're still in control. Yeah. And God, for that, we said thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Yeah. Father God, we thank you for all that you've done oh, and all that you're you. going to do, God, because you are God. Regardless of what's going on, God, we can lean and depend on you because you said that you would be a very present help in the time of trouble, shelter in the time of storm, food when we're hungry, God, friend to the friend, sick it closer than a brother. And God, for that we said, thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We ask you right now, God, to come into this Bible study, God, and make yourself a mighty name. Let our pastor down in your storehouse of wisdom and knowledge that he will write and divide the truth. Because, God, we're living in perilous time. And the only thing that's going to stand on this afternoon is the word of God. And, God, we need the word. Because that's the only thing that's going to keep us is your word, God. And, God, for that we said thank you. Bless him in a very special way. Don't forget Sister Black on this afternoon. Touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. God, you know all that she's going through. But one thing that we do know, that you are a doctor above all doctors. You got medicine in the hymn of your God. And God, for that, we said thank you, thank you, thank you. We pray for the needs of the people all over the world. We pray for our church family, God, that we will come together in love and unity, God. That we will stand on your word, God, and on your promises, God. And for that, we said thank you. We pray for the trouble all over the land. But one thing we do know, God. That you are here, there, and everywhere. Because you God. The word said you never God. All we got to do is say Jesus and something will happen. And God, for that, we said thank you. Father God, we thank you for this afternoon. We give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. And God, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. 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 Yes, Lord. For the song and scripture and prayer that we're ready for for tonight. Yes, God. We ask you to get ready now for after the teacher of the Bible, our Pharaoh Pastor, yes. Pastor Black. We ask you to take the word in and apply it to our lives each and every day. Yes. Pastor God. Black, congregation. Amen. Thank you, God. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. amen. Let us pray, most gracious and all wise and eternal God, we thank you for this day. We yes, thank you for Lord. last night rest. Yes. Thank you for early rising this morning. Yes, thank you for life and health and strength. Yes. All that you've done and all you're doing, getting ready Lord, to do. Yes. We ask you, God, to just let us down into the storehouse of your knowledge and of your wisdom and of your understanding. Yes, Help yes. us, Father, to rightly divide the word yes, yes. Father, they will touch hearts, touch minds, touch souls. Yes. Father, we will live a better Christian life. Yes. We ask you, blessing all other blessings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's say good evening to everybody, those amen. here, giving honor to God, which is the head my life, amen, to Vanish Black, Vanish Stokes, Vanish Lassina, amen, Vanish Rogers, 
and it's wrong on everybody and they respect the order through it. It's just a blessing and it's just good just to be back in the house of God Amen. one more time. Amen. Truly God has been good to us. Not only has been, but God is still is good. Yes. 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 So everything that's going on, God is still yes. good. Yes. Yes. And all that's going on around the world, yes. Amen. Yes. God is still good. Yes. So, so we owe him the praise and we owe him the honor and the glory on tonight. Thank you for being on tonight. Amen. Be very brief tonight. Amen. We just want to drop a word in to help all of us, help myself and, and, and help you too. Amen. We want to talk on the subject tonight, the importance of being faithful. The importance of being faithful. No matter who you are, where you come from, going through life, all of us will have some trials. Amen. And we will have some tribulation. But even though when all of that takes place, God still is looking. God still wants us to be faithful. Amen. Regardless to what happened in life, God wants us to be faithful. Amen. If nobody else be faithful, God wants us to be faithful. Yes. Amen. Yes. Even in our darkest time, uh, even going through our trials and oh, yeah. tribulation, Amen. God is looking and calling for faithfulness Amen. in people. Amen. And sometimes we look at the things that's happening around us, uh, we get uh, thrown off track. But God wants us to be faithful. Amen. Amen. We can't look at the crowd. We can't look at the one that's here, one that's oh, not yeah. here, why, whatever. But God is looking for us to be faithful. Uh, you can't lose for being faithful to God. Amen. Amen. Try again. You can't lose for being faithful to God. Amen. Now, first of all, when we're talking about uh, the importance of faithfulness, let's look at it from this point of view first. Uh, God is still faithful. Yes, yes. God, God is faithful. Amen. So now, if, if, if God is, is faithful, Amen. God is looking for you and I to be faithful. Amen. Amen. You can't do it all the time. I mean, you can't make every service. You can't do all that you want to do. But yet, still, God is looking for us to be faithful. Amen. I mean, it's good to be saved. Nothing. I'm going to get to the point in a few minutes. It's good to be saved. Nothing wrong with that. That's the best thing about it. But just being saved is not enough. God wants you to be faithful. Amen. Even though you're saved, God still want you to be faithful. Amen. Amen. Look at it from this point of view. Uh, when you go to work, whatever your uh, your job is on, your job description is on that job, uh, you have to do just more than show up. That's right. Amen. If you just showed up and didn't do anything, they wouldn't need you. That's right. Amen. So Amen. just being saved is just not enough. God Amen. wants you to be saved and be faithful Amen. along with being saved. Amen. Amen. So, uh, it's not enough for just to be saved by itself or just being faithful to Amen. God. It brings a genuine strength in a Christian life. Amen. It brings true strength, true value in our life when we are being faithful to God. And even sometimes uh, in our darkest moment, we can't see how we're going to get out of what we're in. God still wants oh, us yeah. to be faithful. Amen. Amen. God, God wants us to be faithful that we can become our strong soldiers. Amen. God is looking for a Christian soldier. But in order for us to be a strong soldier, we must be faithful. Amen. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians, I'm going to read these, and, and I have one, Joanne may read in a few minutes tonight, but we want to uh, get a good foundation of being faithful. Uh, let's back up that Jesus is still faithful. I just wrote some scriptures down to let us know that Jesus is still faithful. Amen. I said that, but I still think we need to go to the word of God. But he is still faithful. Paul talks about it in 1 Thessalonians. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. Uh, Paul says words like that. He said, he said, faithful is he that calleth you. You know the word of God is faithful. Faithful is he that calleth you and who will do it. Whatever God has said he's going to do, you can count on what God can say. Matter of fact, God is not slack concerning his promise. Whatever God said, God is going to do it. Amen. In 2 Thessalonians, which is still Paul's writing, chapter 3 and verse 3, 
He said, but the Lord is faithful. I just said that a while ago. We talked about the importance of being faithful on our behalf. But I'm just bringing this out so you just let you know that God is still faithful. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Isn't that nice? I mean, he's so faithful until he established you and I and keep us from evil. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, said words like this. It said, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful, that's promised. God is faithful to his word. In first John chapter 1 and verse 9 said if we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness now that, that's showing where he, he, he's faithful so now if, if God is faithful we ought to be faithful to him Amen. look how we have rejected him. Look how we have denied him. Look how we have let him down somewhere in our life where God has still, still been faithful to Amen. us. Amen. Amen. Look how every morning he don't forget to wake us up. Amen. Even Amen. though we did things that we said whatever we went through, but every morning God is faithful. Amen. God Amen. is true. He, he ran on time. He, he, he's never late. And so if he's all that faithful to you and I, we ought to be faithful to him. Let me try it again. We should be faithful to him. Amen. Let, let's go to two verses tonight. I uh, just want to just tap into them just for a moment. I want to read them in the book of uh, Revelation. Amen. And Revelation uh, uh, chapter 2. Uh, yes, Revelation chapter 2. And we want to read verses 8 through 10. Amen. Three verses. Revelation chapter 2. Verses 8 to 10. Amen. And this is, uh, he's writing to the church of small. Amen. Verse 8 said, let, let me read it for you. Unto the angels of the church in small, he writes. In other words, he's talking to angels. He's, when he said to the angels of the church, that is the preacher. Mm -hmm. That's who he's talking Amen. to. And said to the angels of the church of small, write. These things said the first and the last. This is what Jesus said which was dead and is alive. Listen to what he said. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say that they are Jews and are not, but the synagogue of Satan. You know, I just couldn't just let that word go by uh, when he said the synagogue, I said they just grabbed it. I just had to dig and find out what he was saying. You know what that synagogue means? The congregation of the devil. I said, wow. Uh, so God knows everything that we are, are going through. And you'll find out that uh, in Smyrna, uh, the believer was being persecuted. They were going through some things. But guess what? God still wanted them to be faithful, even though that they were being persecuted. Uh, Listen how verse 10 says. It said, but none of these things, this is what he said, but none of these things which thou shalt suffer is saying you're going to go through. Amen. Those of us that are believers in Christ, we're going to go through some things. Amen. But even though we're going to have trials and tribulations, God wants us to be faithful. There's no time to throw in the towel, no time to back up because trials and tribulations come. Amen. It said, but none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Then he said, behold, which means look, the devil shall cast some. And this is all. The devil shall cast some of you in prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. In other words, it's not going to last long. Uh-oh. Oh We're all going to go through some things in life, but it won't last forever. But while we're going through, God is saying he wants us to be faithful. Yours may be 10 days, mine may be 15 days, yours may be 20. But ever have the length of time that we're going through, God wants us still to remain being faithful. See, just because you have a downfall or persecution or going through something, you just don't drop your salvation, just don't drop out. 
you still gonna have to be faithful, even though that your sickness hits your body. You still say. Amen. Even though you're going through a hard time, you're still saved. Yes, so what he's saying, I, I need for you to still be faithful. Let's look at the last clause. The last clause says words like this. It says, be thou faithful. Amen. That's what he said. Yes, See, that's what he's talking to the church. He says, to the church, he said, be thou faithful unto Amen. death. In other words, as long as you live, God wants us to be faithful. Amen. In other words, uh, once you accept him as, your, as your, your Savior, Christ is looking for you and I to be faithful unto death. In other words, it, it doesn't matter uh, how big our problem, how big is our situation. He still wants you and I to be faithful. Uh, James said, word like I said, count it all joy. Fall when you yeah. fall in diverse temptation. I mean, yeah. sometimes, you know, sometimes we'll fall in diverse temptation, but we, we really don't want to count it all joke. We don't want to, you don't find too many folk it's praising true. God when they uh, might as well be honest yeah, about it. But all this stuff comes, sometimes we stop and, and we go to the morning, whatever, but we want to count it. He said, count it all oh, joy oh, oh, when we oh, fall oh, in diverse temptation. Oh, he said, word like this. He said, be thou faithful. Faith. Talking to you, ever who read it, be thy faithful unto death. Yeah. And, uh, you know what unto death means? Be faithful till Jesus come. Yeah. Right, see, then, now you feel it. Now, be faithful until he come. We talk about the importance of being faithful. And we'll get to it in a few more minutes. About we, we, and we, if we continue to be faithful, we will have a reward. Yeah. It said, be thy faithful unto death. And this is what he said. This is why, what makes it so important. It said, be thou faithful unto death. And this is what he said. And I, he didn't talk about nobody. He said nothing about the pastor, the bishop, the moderator. He didn't say nothing about none of them folks. He said, but I will give thee, you, I will give thee a crown. Oh, my God. See, you see what I mean by being faithful? This, this, these people went through some things. Jesus told them, the church of Smyrna, he told them, he said, listen, he said, I know thy work. And the tribulation and the poverty. He said, But thou art rich. In other words, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to be by your side. And he said, I know uh, the blasphemy. In other words, those Jews will put you through something. But guess what? You still be faithful. Amen. So, what are you really, what is this black? What are you saying? I'm merely saying, Let people do what they want to do. Let people say what they want to say about you. But you be faithful. Amen. See, a lot of times we want to quit. We want to stop. We want to throw in the towel because somebody is saying and somebody is doing things to us in our life. But the scripture let us know we're going to have people on us to be faithful. And it, it talks about it. It said, but the believers of Smyrna was, was undergoing persecution. They were going through persecution. They were going through poverty. They were being revealed uh, by the unbelieving Jews. The unbelieving Jews were giving them a hard time. Guess what? Sometimes people give us a hard time. But you know what? I have made up in my sanctified mind that for the rest, I, I may stumble, I may fall, but I made up in my mind, I'm going to be faithful on that. And, and being faithful is no, not always convenient. Amen. Sometimes it's difficult. Yeah. Sometimes you got to say no to somebody. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to have to let some things go. Yeah. Why? Yeah. What as good as God has been to me, where God yeah. has brought me yeah. from, I, I'm going to be faithful to God. And so they, he, was, he was encouraging them. He was letting them know. He said, you're going through a lot of things for, with the unbeliever. But he encouraged them to endure suffering. In other words, while you are suffering, persecution is suffering. In other words, while you are going through your suffering. You know what he's saying? I, I, I need for you to be faithful. Now, oh, God, help us here. I mean, why are you being ridiculed? Why are you being persecuted? Why are you going through all these things that we are going through? He said, I, I need for you to be faithful. And, and sometimes we want to ask God, say, God, how much more? I, God, I've I, I taken all I can take. God, I can't put up with no more, God. But God, but guess what he said? Be faithful. God, God is looking for somebody to be faithful. You know what? I, I, I want to be faithful to God and faithful with God that when I call on God, God will answer. I, I, I want to live so that when I call on the name of God, God will come out. I, I want to pray so when I pray to God, God will. I, I want to read and study and meditate that when I do the word of God, I can feel his presence. God wants us 
to be prayed for. Somebody might say, well, I, I, I can't run as fast as I used to run. Be faithful in walking. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's what that's right. I, I can't do as much as I used to do, but be faithful in the little bit that you can do. Yeah. I, I might can't read like you can read, might can't text and type like you can type, but do your very best. Right. Be, be faithful where God, wherever God has called you, be faithful in that. Yeah. God help me right here. Yeah. So God is, is looking for all of us to, to be faithful. Amen? And, and when you study it, you don't have to do it. We don't have time to do it all night. But when you go back and study uh, Revelation chapter 2 about small of the church, you're going to find out that uh, they were very prosper. In other words, talk like it was a prosper place. Talk like it was a beautiful city. And talk like it, it was near Ephesus. And talk like it, it, it named represent some types of perfume or some types of uh, like a cologne type. In other words, it used for uh, bear, when it bear the bodies and, and, and settle them. And, and talk like they was tied all up into a whole lot of politics and different things. But when the Christian came through there, they didn't give them a good name. They, they didn't work along with them. They were being persecuted. But what, what Jesus was telling them, he said, God, I feel this. But he said, but you know what? He said, but I know your works. In other words, when people say that you are nothing, you'll never be nothing. God knows your work. When you know that you, see, when you being faithful, for being faithful is not being on the outside when somebody can see everything you can do. See, when you being faithful, I'm talking about home praying, home reading, home studying, home meditating, when nobody see you, God is looking for us to be faithful. In our difficult times, in our in our hard times, I don't have time to go to it. But all these seventy churches, they, they, they had a problem. All God, He went to every last one of them, told them their situation. Yes, he did. He, he told him that their problem. And guess what? When it, when it says something like the word like this, said to my the angel, he talking about the pastor. Amen. Because the pastor is the head. Amen. So what are you saying? I, I'm literally saying tonight, we all going through some stuff. Right. But we need to be faithful. Amen. We, we all going through some trial. We all going through some tribulation. But what he's saying, we need to be faithful. And I kept reading and found out, he said, now if we continue to be in faithful, said what he would do, it will bring a crown of life. If you continue to be faithful, I promise you through and by the word of God, it will bring you a crown of life. Let, let people poke fun at you. Let people laugh at you. Let people talk about you. Let people try to scandalize your name. Let people try to push ox aside you. Let them do what they want to do. But you just be faithful. Oh, God. And you know what? Then let me tell you something. God, God will give you favor, not just because you need it or want it, but God will give you favor just for being faithful. When, when, when God looks out and sees that you are faithful, oh, God will give you strength in the midst of your weakness. God will give you healing in the midst of your sickness. I'm talking about when you're just being faithful. And sometimes, God, sometimes when you're being faithful, nobody recognizes that you are being faithful. But don't worry about nobody patting you on your back. Nobody saying amen. Nobody witness you. But you just be faithful. When, when you be faithful, we ought to have a track record of being faithful. Let, let me jump off my noose and come back. You should be so faithful to your church until when you are missed, somebody miss you. Amen. But then uh, you can turn around, you can be so far absent, nobody miss you. Amen. That's how faithful you ought to be. Amen. And that's how faithful we ought to be to God. Amen. God is looking for faithful Amen. Christians. Nothing catches God by surprise. But everything can catch us by surprise. But nothing catches God by surprise. Oh, yes. And so he began to tell the church. And we we'll move on. He said uh, in verse 9, I believe that's what it is. He said, not, not that your church or not that the associate pastor, not that your overseer, not that your bishop. He said, but I, I know your works. Amen. The Lord knows know our work. Amen. He knows our work. You know what he said? And tribulation. Mm -hmm. 
I know what you're going through. Oh, yeah. Then some folks about, well, I'm, I'm going to sit down and tell God, you don't really don't have to tell God nothing. Yeah. He already know. He, know he already know. Oh, yeah. But if you read that last part of 10, verse, he said, but well, be thou faithful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's speaking to the church. He said, be thou faithful unto death. In other words, when you read this text, when you read this scripture, you'll find out that they went through some things. They had persecution. Amen. But guess what? He would tell them, he said, well, be faithful unto death. He said, be thou faithful unto death. And this is what he said. And said, and I, that he go again. He said, and I will give thee, I will give you, I will give thee a crown of life. In other words, you will have a reward. Uh -huh. That's the word. Woo! Let me see how can I say this. Let me throw this out like a boomerang and let it come back. You, you can have, you can be saved. Then let me all of them work this way first. You can graduate from school and still won't have no reward. Amen. That's right. There's nothing wrong with it. A lot of students graduate without they reward. Have no but have y'all been to the ceremony when graduation time come? They have special yeah. reward. Yeah. From you know, from high school, from ninth to the twelfth grade. Some, some kept a certain average, some yeah. that done great thing. And guess what they did? They kept a record of that. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, some have kept a uh, A average all the way through high school. Grade points stayed up. All of them, they kept a record of that. And when they got ready to graduate, uh, they were recognized. Yeah. They received a reward. Yeah. But guess what? They didn't lose their diploma. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they didn't lose their diploma. Yeah. They still got the diploma plus a reward. Well, guess I see what you're saying. I hear it, but I still don't understand. I'm glad you asked that. Now, now I can help you. Oh, yeah. When the end of the time come, we won't lose our salvation, but we might lose the reward for just not being faithful. Oh, now we don't shift. You follow what I'm saying, man? So we still got to be faithful. And guess what? I, I want to hold on to my reward. I, I want to hold on to my salvation. I just I don't lose none of it. But I'm going to have to be faithful to God in order to receive my reward. Now, God, this is good. In graduation time, ceremony time, most of the time they would get uh, a, a doctor, somebody, a high school, whatever. Or sometimes the, the, the principal of the school, uh, they would call their name out, you know, and get there and get a reward. But guess what? As big as this world, and as many folks in this world, Jesus Christ going to pass out every room. Amen. <laughs> Do you follow? Now, nobody's going to be there to assist. Isn't that awesome? He's going to be the one to pass the reward out, but guess what? We're going to have to be faithful in order to get a reward. Woo, God. See, when we, we're talking about being faithful, we mean faithful in leading, faithful in preaching, faithful in teaching, faithful in witness, faithful in studying, faithful in meditating, faithful in carrying people in the right. See, all of that stuff. Amen. Uh-oh. Yes. In order to get a reward. You, how do you expect to get, listen, how do you expect, now there, I don't have heard it lately, but I, when I was going to school, every once in a while, somebody would get a perfect attendance. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. I know some get a perfect attendance from first grade on up. Oh, they didn't never miss a day. I said, wow. Mm -hmm. I faked a few days, act like I was sick, just so I couldn't go. <laughs> y'all didn't look at me funny. Some of y'all played sick too. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Play stick too. Amen. <laughs> but that <laughs> listen. But the believers or smart was undergoing the persecution. They were going through some stuff. But Jesus had to tell them, I know your works. I know your tribulation. But listen, you be faithful unto death. And then if you be faithful unto death. I will give you a crown of life. That's what we want. A crown of life. Let me hit another street. This is good. Let's go to uh, Revelation 22 and 12. This is why I come 
it's so important that, to be faithful. This is why I come it's very important that we need to be faithful. <clears throat> Revelation 22 and 12, which is the last book, last chapter, verse 12. And this is why we need to read. This is, this is one of the reasons that we need to be faithful. Mm -hmm. This is what he said. And behold. This word behold means look. look. Listen to what he said. Jesus is saying, I come quickly. Mm -hmm. And my reward is with me. Listen to what he said. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. This is what he said. To give everything. Did your book read anywhere close Amen. like that? Amen. It is said about to every other, but to give every, every man. Every man. See, what you do, that's what you will get rewarded for. Amen. And if you don't do nothing, you're not going to get nothing. Let, let me see how, how we can work this out. I don't know how to do it now, but you know, uh, they used to sometimes that if you didn't make your grade, uh, graduation time especially, you didn't march. And then one time they would let you march, but you didn't know what was in there to you. you, didn't get you didn't get that's where the you used to do. Amen. But guess what? <laughs> God is giving us a midterm exam now. Wow. My Lord. Wow. <laughs> you know, y'all know what midterm exam is? Yeah. When you're just about halfway. halfway. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we're about halfway. Mm -hmm. God has given us a midterm exam. We're going through some things. Yeah. But guess what? He's going to give a final exam. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He really don't have to give a final exam because he already knows who is passable. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He already know who is passable. And you know how it is sometimes you go to school. Sometimes if you didn't make it, you had somebody that would kind of push you across the line. Mm -hmm. Somebody try to help you. But you're going to have to earn it from, from here. Amen. And that's why I come out. Thank God for his grace. Yes, Let's move along. And, and, and behold, I come quickly. This is what he's saying. Behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. Man, he gonna bring his reward when it come. Amen. Watch this. I sometimes think about it when I go when I went to a graduation this year, and, and I, I saw that whole stack of diplomas where the folks graduate. And I said, man, I how all them children walked around it. I said, man, don't take but one to mess up the whole line. Amen. I mean, they have them in alphabetical order. But guess what? God already knows. And this is what he said: to give every man. According to his work shall be. Amen. This is why come you and I need to be faithful. Amen. You got to work out your own soul. soul. Oh, salvation. you already got it, man. You, you got to work out your own soul salvation. You can't make it for nobody else. Amen. I can't make it for you. You can't make it for me. It's important that you be faithful. Amen. God wants you to be faithful. Faithful in everything that we do through and by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let, let's move along and hit some more. God is looking for faithful men and women. Where are they? Mm. Listen, I, I jot this down. Sometimes God gives me some, I, I go to write. Listen, people want to be popular and powerful, Amen. but not, and no, they want to be popular and powerful and famous, but not faithful. Men and women want to be popular and want to be powerful and want to be famous, but not faithful. You're going to have to be faithful before you be popular and powerful and famous. Mm, but guess what? I'd rather be faithful if I'm not even popular. I'd rather be faithful if I'm not even famous. As long as you be faithful to God, that's what it's all about. Listen, why? Because it's all about Jesus. Yes, it is. Mm. And the work that we are doing, this is judgment work. Yes. And we need to be faithful. Yes. Not sometime, but all 
long time. We can look around today and see people with great names, but they're not faithful. We all may not, we all may have, we all may not have the same gift. Amen. And we may not have had the same calling. Amen. But whatever your gift is, and whatever your calling is, he wants you to be faithful. Amen. See, just like the church is following this, just because you will have some persecution, somebody's gonna kick against you, you're gonna stay away from God how? Because something hits you. Because the word hits you. Very seldom I go to church when somebody preaches to you, but it don't hit me somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. That word hits me somewhere. Mm. But wherever you are called, whatever your gift is, be faithful. Amen. Being faithful in serving the Lord, it will pay off. If you be faithful, it will pay off. We need to be faithful when things are good and then we need to be faithful when things are bad. Amen. God will bless you and strengthen you just for being faithful. Amen. Let me try it again. Amen. God will strengthen you. God will bless you just for being Amen. faithful. Amen. You know how sometimes we say, well, uh, are you going uh, are you going to do this? Are you going to do something? They said, no, I don't believe I go. They said, well, I will go, but I don't think I'm not going there. No, that, that's not good. Amen. Watch this. If, if, if Dick and Eric and myself uh, work to the same factory, and we work 40 hours a week, and we get the same amount of money, I mean, we make the same amount of money per hour. Now, if Dick and Eric work 40 hours, his check will be one thing. And I mess around with a third, and mine will be something else. Amen. 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 And I can't get upset because he got a full check. Amen. And then tell my they don't like me. No. No, me need to go to work. Amen. It's just that simple. Amen. You better put, let me tell y'all something. We better put our time in while we have a chance. Amen. Amen. If somebody may not understand me, and I may not understand you. But I want to live so. This just me personally. I want to live so. If something happened in my life, I won't have to look back and say, you know what? I wish I had went better. I wish I had put in some more. Oh, yeah. I, I won't get to the point. Get to the point. If I can't even make it to the church, I say, well, now we're able. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I want to live off when I was able. Amen. While I was in good health. I don't want to be wished I could go there. No, while I have a chance, while I'm in good health, I want to put in all the time that I can. Amen. And folks talking about retirement. You're going to have to, re you got to put some time in retirement. You don't do nothing. What you going to retire from? Amen. You don't do nothing for God and want God to come see about you. Want God to help you. Want God to assist you. And you don't put no time in. I think, it's, I think Solomon talks about it in Ecclesiastes. Say, remember now that I created in the days that I knew why the evil days draw now. Oh, yeah. That's the word. It's not going to be like this all the way. Amen. Let God do some good. You might be up today and may be well today, but keep right on living. Amen. That's all I can say. Amen. Just keep right on living. And you may live a long time. Something's going to cross your path. Amen. But guess what? Regardless of what crossed your path, we need to be faithful to God. I wish I had somebody be in their mind. They're going to be faithful. Amen. God will bless you. God will strengthen you if you be faithful. Mm. Some people are more faithful to man and to their job than they are God. Amen. Shame on you. Amen. Being faithful to God is an eternal. Amen. It won't, it's not temporary. It's yeah. eternal. Because only what you and I do for God Oh, come on here. Only what we do for God will last. God, listen. Knowing God and being faithful to him will bring you assurance. Amen. Oh, you, you all heard that old hymn about blessing Let assurance. Assure. Jesus, Jesus is mine. Oh, but you're going to have to be faithful to him. Amen. God, let me jump off of that. This is good. Uh, in, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah, uh, 
chapter 38, verses 1 through 5. Watch this. You can say what you will, man. Hezekiah was faithful to God. Yes, he was. He, he was faithful to God because you, you know how the story when Isaiah went to him and told him that God said, set your house in order that you're going to die and can't live. And he just turned to the wall. He didn't say a long prayer. He just said, Lord, you know my life. He, he was faithful to God. Amen. And then when Isaiah, Isaiah got, before he could get out of the court, good. He said, God spoke to him and said, go back to the same man. And said, tell him, God said, tell him two things. Said, no, three things. Said, tell him I seen his prayers. I seen his tears and heard his prayer. And that ain't all. Said, tell him I'm going to have 15 more years. So I told you, being faithful. And then gave him a sign. Then gave, gave him a sign, yeah. yeah. But right. being faithful to God, God will find favor yes, just for right. being faithful. Yes, he will. We, we, we ought to live so to God. We ought to be so faithful to God that when we call God, y'all say, God, you know my life. You know how I live. God, you know how I pray. You know how I read and study and meditate. God, you know how I walk upright. That's all you got to say. And God can look back and say he's faithful. Right. Amen. Let me jump off and know God, this is good. Yeah. Well, yesterday when I was walking around in the yard, God was telling me about being faithful. I said, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I said, how many of us that have clocks on our wall? If you go by there every day, you find out it lost time. Wow. You go put a new battery and it still won't keep time. After a while, you set that clock and it still won't keep time. Mm -hmm. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to get me another clock. Oh, because this clock won't keep time. Won't keep time. Amen. All of us, including myself, I want my clock and my watch to be faithful. Amen. When I look at it, I want my time accurate. That's right. <laughs> but when you look at your clock, when you look at it, you want that clock to be accurate. Yeah. But watch this. Very seldom you find a clock gaining. Mm -hmm. Very seldom. Most of the time a clock will either stop or lose time. Lose time. Very seldom you find yeah. one gaining. Yeah. But watch this. If that clock is not faithful, you go get you another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But guess what? We like the old clock. We done lost time. But guess what? God did not throw us away. Because we haven't been <laughs> we, we, we haven't been faithful to God. We have lost time. But guess what? His grace and his mercy stepped in and looked at listen. None of us have lived good enough to see today. But guess by his grace and his mercy. God allowed us to see another day to roll on. When you wake up in the morning, watch this. God, this is good. I don't care what you're going through, the clock, the old hand on the wall, it keeps right on ticking. Amen. It keeps right on going. But guess what? When I lost time with God, God didn't throw me away. Amen. Now, what did he do? He reset me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? All, when I lost time with God, I'm talking about since I've been saved, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't been reading and studying and praying and fasting and meditating like I ought to. Yeah. Then y'all looking at me kind of funny. Yeah. And so when you don't read and study and pray and meditate and fast and stay before God, you lose time. Yeah. And when a clock lose time, we go back and reset. And that's what happened to me. When I felt, when I lost time, God didn't throw me away. He went back and reset me. Amen. Amen. And every time that we lose time, God will reset us. He don't, he don't throw us away because we lost time. And you know what? They don't, God, this is good. You don't see them too much now. They used to have the more clock that you wind up. Wind up. Yeah. Oh, sometimes you, you wind them up. Amen. And guess what? What are you saying? Sometimes we need to wind it up. Yeah. The only thing we need for somebody just to wind us up. Yeah. 
because we have lost time. And you know what? I want to be faithful to God that when I start to weaken down, I want God to wind me back up. Amen. I don't have time to look at nobody else. I got to look at myself because I want to be faithful to God. Amen. Let, let's move on. My time is good. This is good. Being faithful to God will bring you assurance. Being faithful to God will bring you contentment. Being faithful to God will bring you prosperity. Now, when I say prosperity, I'm not talking about silver and gold and money. Amen. I'm talking about growing in the wisdom and the Amen. knowledge of Jesus Christ. Boy. Because if any man lack the wisdom, let him ask God. Being faithful to God will bring you protection. That you know, it will bring you safety for your body and your soul. And you know what? I want all the safety that I can get for my body and my soul. Amen. We have camels all around our house, all around our churches, and everywhere. But we guess what? Jesus Christ is our best security oh, God. Yeah. Amen. He's our best security God. Have God a witness. Amen. Oh, Listen. Being a Christian, being a Christian and being faithful when you are the Christian, you're going to be faithful. And you're going to love God. You're going to love his will. You're going to love his word. And you're going to love his way. Amen. Let me try it again. Amen. When you're being faithful, you're going to love his will, his word, and his way. Amen. Amen. And you're going to be faithful in serving him. Mm. We're going to be faithful in carrying on the ministry in prayer and interceding for other people. That ain't all. We're going to be faithful attending the church, too. Amen. 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 Mm -mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Paul was faithful in proclaiming the gospel. Oh, yeah. And he was faithful in winning souls. That, that's Amen. one thing that uh, I want to get to be a pro at. Mm -hmm. Is winning souls. Hello? Oh, yeah. We got to be faithful with it. And guess what? Being faithful with the soul, you got to be willing to accept rejection. Amen. 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 I mean, you, you got to be willing to deal with folks who don't want to hear what you got to say. Amen. Amen. But you still have to be faithful. Amen. And don't have, and we have gotten away from that. Moses was faithful in leading and interceding for other people. Timothy, he was faithful to the task that God had assigned to him. And so, therefore, we're going to have to be faithful if we want a reward from him. Let me try it again. We're going to have to be faithful if we want a reward from him. Listen, we got to be faithful in praying and faithful in looking out for other people. You may can do all that you want to do, but we got to be faithful praying to God. Watch, watch this. Show you another being faithful. Paul, Paul was one of the greatest one I, I looked at by being faithful. Even though they put him in jail, uh -huh. This brother yeah. was still faithful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can, can you imagine being in a cold jail and you still in there talking about God? Mm -hmm. You might want to ask, of course, God, I mean, if you who you say you are, and I mean, why I'm where I'm located, but guess what? He was still faithful. Mm -hmm. Even when he was whipped, persecuted, mm -hmm. put stripes on him, this boy was still faithful. Mm -hmm. Now watch what I'm saying there. He was so faithful to God until when he was in prison, he wrote the Lord Georgia of his letter while he was in jail. Amen. He didn't write them in a library or ever sit in a pastor's office somewhere. Amen. He was in jail. Still writing. Because he was faithful to God. And the reason why he was being so faithful to him because he knew that he had a reward. In, in the book, I believe in the book of Philemon, I believe it is, it's only about, about one chapter there. Uh, when you read about almost uh, was, was a runaway slave. That's right. yeah. 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 yeah, run runaway slave. And, 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 and he ended up in there where Paul was located. Right. And uh, you have to read the history to get this. He said, uh, what brings you here? Why, why are you in here? You know, been some of us. We've been thinking about how we can get out. Wow. <laughs> I mean, be honest with yourself. Oh, yeah. 
And, and he's sitting all, he's sitting all up in there, you know, talking about why, why, what brings you here? Why are you here? And uh, you know, the hero told him, say, I'm a runaway slave. I, I stole from my master, or whatever. But Paul was so faithful until he, while he was in prison, oh, he just started yeah. talking to him. <laughs> and guess what? But Paul found out who his master, master were. was. Mm -hmm. And, and, and guess what he did? Paul, somewhere, somebody, somewhere, mm -hmm. cut a tree down and took it, made some paper. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And got him a pen and a piece of paper. Right. And Paul started writing. Yeah, and Paul let let his master know. You read it. It's sitting there. He oh, said, yeah. master, yeah, he said uh, I, I'm in a kind of with uh, the runaway slave. He 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 done you wrong, etc. But you know, Paul told his master, he said, listen, he said, he said, but uh, when you take him back, treat him as a brother. Oh, <laughs> I mean, the man in jail, he was faithful. Oh, but if it's you and I, I've been saying, bail me out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Okay. laughs> he said, well, he, he was in, in the world. God, this is good. Paul was so faithful. He was concerned about the church and why he was in jail. He sat up in jail writing stuff like this. said, I heard that there was a division among I mean, all that. I, I'll be trying to say this. Is there any way you can get me? I ain't done nothing. <laughs> if it's something different, if he had committed a crime. But he more didn't do no crime. But it was still just as faithful. Listen. After they put stripes on, they beat him. They, listen, put left him half dead one time, oh, and he still got red right on back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was faithful to it. Yeah. And that's what we need to do. We need to be faithful. One more copies. Even in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 20 through 26, 27, so in that neighborhood. When Paul was in prison, y'all read it before Paul and Silas in that. The boy was still faithful. Amen. Still faithful when his soul. Amen. Even though they were, were beat. Amen. Now, now watch what I'm saying. They didn't have no central heat nor no central air. Amen. 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 Now the scripture said they were beat. Amen. Now don't you know that their wound was kind of, you know. Yeah. Amen. But guess what? They weren't even worried about no Bad days, no being healed and up and that. They were still concerned about folk. Now watch what I'm saying. The Bible said at midnight, they were so faithful until they said at midnight, we're going to pray to God. Amen. And God heard their prayer. They said it came in and suddenly there was a great earthquake. And then you, you know the story how Paul and Tom, they didn't run. But I'm going to be honest with you. If it would have been me and Dick and Edward, Oh, yeah. And we prayed. I prayed and he saw. And God opened that door. Oh, yeah. You know what I would have said? Jesse, let's go. God did it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. First thing we we'll thought about, God made a way. He said, look at her. Shackles all up. Oh, yeah. It's time for us to go. God said, let's go. But guess what? They were so faithful. To God, were he, to, to God was saving in the jail. Oh, yeah. Amen. The scripture goes on and say that uh, they didn't put them just in a jail. Oh. They put them in a dungeon. Oh, yeah. They yeah. put them with bald oh. head, hard crime, oh. hard trembling. God, he didn't just put them in folk that just you know, had a little stole oh, or something. Boy. But they put them in a hard trembling. Oh, and oh, and yeah. the boy was so powerful. That's why I said God, God was still in jail with him. I don't have time. I won't mess with it now. But I tell you one thing: you can, I can show you where God went to jail too. Oh, yeah. oh, when did God go to jail? He went to jail. He went to jail when Joseph went. Oh, yeah. And when yes, Paul and Silas went to jail, he went to jail with me. He was right there. Amen. Now watch what I'm saying. The new boy was dying in the dungeon. Guess what? I don't know why they did it, but he said at midnight. midnight. Said Paul and Silas, God help me. Paul and Silas pray. Talk like they had an earthquake. Then don't you know that was powerful? They were so faithful until God heard them in the jail. Amen. Watch what I'm saying. Mm. They were so faithful until God came to their rescue. And, and, and when God heard their, their prayer and the earthquake came, look, but this is one thing that really blows my mind. I, I can understand it if it just knocked their shackles off. Everybody, well, they talk like all of us. Everybody, everybody, everybody. We, we ought to be so faithful. Oh, 
to God when we pray until it affects folks around us. Amen. Watch this. God. Though God knew that if Paul and Saul had a left or ran, then their life, their life will be taken. But there's something about that story nobody ever talks about. I can understand if the boys had got out of prison or got away from Paul and Saul. But this was an earthquake. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but guess what? The Bible saying that the man pulled the sword out. That's right. The killer said. Got ready to kill himself. Oh, yeah. What would you want to say? We just said, go ahead, you lock me up in here, go ahead. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? But he thought so much of him. Oh, yeah. He was so faithful. He said, hey, man, do yourself no harm. He said, we are all. He said, man, we ain't going to. No, he said, not only is Paul inside, he said, but man, all of us here. Amen. 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 Oh, nobody. Then he asked the question. Mm. He said, what was what must I do to be saved? Oh, yeah. See, he was being so faithful, sister Hazel, to God. He was being so faithful to God. Told, listen, when he told him, he said, listen, what must I do to be faithful, saved? He said, just believe. He didn't tell him to stop doing what he was doing. Amen. He said, just believe on the Lord believe. Jesus Christ, oh, yeah. and thou shalt be saved. Oh, and you know what? Paul went home with this boy. They went home with him. And guess what? This man whole household mm -hmm. will be in shame. And you know what? I, I, I believe somebody else was saved in that too. Oh, yeah. Because Amen. guess what? It didn't say none of them ran away. Amen. Now watch this. Right. Watch what I'm saying. You got four damn breaking out in prison without an earthquake and running. Mm -hmm. That was an earthquake that broke out and didn't even run. Oh, yeah. They stayed right there. Why? Yeah. Because Paul and Saul had something to say. So one only thing I'm saying tonight, regardless to what we are going through, God wants to be faithful. And if we be faithful, there will be a crown for us. Amen. There will be a reward for us if we be faithful. So you just can't be faithful for a little while and stop. It said be faithful unto death. And that's the way I want to be. I want to be faithful unto the end. And if you be faithful to the end, you will hear him say, well, well done. You know the story about him, Matthew, about how he gave the title, gave one, one title, one five, and one ten, and how the first two, they took theirs and, you know, increased it. Came on increased. We got down to the one, the one said, man, so I, I, I hid mine because I thought you were going to be so and so, you know, I went on with all the scripture. Guess what? But those took those and, and increased it. And guess what God said, no. He said, come on in. You've been faithful yeah. over a few yeah. things. Yeah. I'm going to make you rule over many. So it's vital, it's very important tonight, Amen. Amen. that you be faithful. Amen. We don't know what's going to take place. None of us have, I don't think nobody, I talked to some elder folks, they said they had never seen that like this long. Amen. Amen. Never seen nothing like this. And guess what? It may get worse before it get better. Oh, yeah. But whether it get worse or whether it get better, if you be faithful to God, God will see you through. Amen. I just keep on going with you. I'm going to Old Testament and pick up your life. He was faithful to God. Amen. God sent him to a brook. Brook dry up. But he was faithful to God. Oh, God. Do you, you see what I'm talking about? That, that's what I'm talking about. You, you see what I'm saying? And, 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 and why, why would God, I mean, you know, back in my, why would God send you to a place and, and then it dries up? But guess what? The Lord will make a way out. I don't know. And guess what? God was so faithful, and 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 Elisha, the man of God, was so faithful to. He sent him raven, bringing food in the morning, food in the evening. Amen. Then sent him to the widow woman. Do you follow what I'm trying to say? And he asked the woman, "What are you doing?" She said, "Well, I'm just making cakes, and we, me and my son, we gonna eat, and we gonna die." The man of God said, "Give me the first one." Amen. She began to give him the first one, and guess what? Every time she went back to the meal bag, there was something there. So only thing I'm trying to say if you be faithful to God. Now, now the average mother would never done that. 
Amen. Because she said, I just have enough for just me and my child. I said, we're going to eat this and die. But guess what? She gave the man of God the first one. She was faithful. And if you be faithful to God, I promise you, Amen. God will see you through. And Abraham, I wish I could go on. He was faithful to God. Amen. If he were here today, he would tell you, even when God told him to take his son out there and, oh, you know, yeah. and kill his son, put his son on, on, out there. And he, him and his son, they went where God told him to go. Oh, he said, yeah. that, but to make a long story short, he said, that, he said Father, said, I, I, I see the, I see the, the fire. And, oh, but I, I see the altar. I see the wood. He said, but I, I don't see no lamb. But guess what? He was so faithful to God. And to God he just said, my son, God will God will provide. And just about time he said, God will provide. Told like a ram got his horn caught in the thing. And I, I can imagine the father said, I told you so. If you be God, let me, let me tell you, sir, if you be faithful to God, when you get to a bridge and can't see your way through, God will be a bridge over troubles of water. If you be faithful to God, you can walk through the fire and won't even be burnt. If you be faithful to God, you can walk through the water and guess what? You won't even be drowning. If you, if you be faithful to God, all of this stuff can come down on you, but God will make a way out of nowhere. So what are you saying? Regardless of what the economy may do, we may feel the effect, but I'm going to be faithful to God. Then I can look back and say, God, Oh, yeah. You know my life. Yes, sir. And God, you say, if I be faithful, yes, sir. you will make a way out of no way. And all you got to do is just feed God the word back. Just read the word back. That, that's all you got to do. Say, God, you say it. Yeah, God, you say it. And guess what? God is a God that cannot lie. He's not slack concerning his promise. Yes, sir. So the body of Christ, we need to go back to the basic. Go back to the wheel, Amen. go back to the word, and go back to the way. Amen. And be faithful to God. Oh, if we be faithful to God, then our nation can turn around. Amen. I hope I said something to help you Amen. along the way. At this time, there may be a person or a person that's out there that have not been faithful and need to be and ought to be faithful. Uh, God will forgive me. Amen. He's a forgiving God. He said, the day that you hear my voice, heart about your heart, heart. said, come unto me, all of you that are labor and heavy laden. And he said, I, I will give you rest. So you need to come to him. And if you have not been faithful, start now. Start today. Start tonight. Say, you know what? I need to be faithful. There you go. Be faithful in giving your offering. Amen. Faithful in tithing. Yes. Can, can I just say this? We, we're through. Yeah. It, it, times, when I, just let me say by myself. When I can't come, I'm going to be sure my tithes, my offering. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be just as faithful absent as when I'm present. Amen. So if you're not present and something come up, emergency, sickness, death, tragedy, work, whatever, you still ought to be faithful in doing your obligation. Amen. 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 See, just because you don't come, you still ought to still do your obligation. Amen. See, let me just say that brother lives in New Orleans, but she have a house in Greenland. If she don't pay that light bill, somebody will be in the dark. So you still have an obligation that you still need to be faithful to. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And just because, you know, we have, you know, uh, online, uh, on Facebook, you know, and you sit back in your PJs enjoying the Sunday morning service, enjoying the Bible study, you still are obligated to pay your tithes and offerings. You're still Amen. obligated Amen. to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. 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 Church don't run on the great amazing grace, how sweet it sounds. I once was love, but now I found oh Amen. how I love Jesus. Amen. It takes more than that. So we, God, we still need to be faithful. Amen. God is looking for faithful people. Amen. This is a pressing, this is a trying time. Amen. Stop lying on COVID. Amen. Amen. A lot of folks put it on the COVID. It ain't all the COVID. Mm -hmm. Amen. You need to be faithful to God. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Most gracious and all wise and eternal God be come again tonight to 
tell you thank you. Thank you for last night rest. Thank you for early rising this morning. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for your love and your kind. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Down through the years, Father, you, you've been good to us. Father, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And Father, we thank you. We thank you now for being a shelter. We thank you, Father, for being a doctor. Yes. Father, we thank you for being a mind. Oh, yes, thank you, Father, for being a heart revelator. Yes, thank you for wrapping your arms around us and keeping us in your thank care. You, we thank you how you washed over us all oh, night long. Yes. And Father, early this morning, yes. you touched us with a flame of love. Yes. And Father, we behold a brand new day. And oh, Father, yes. we thank you for that. You, and Father, even though, Father, from the rock and our crater to now, we stumbled, we fell along yes. the way. But by you being God Almighty, you look beyond our faults, and Father, you saw our need. And Father, I thank you for it. And so, Father, we pray tonight, forgive us for all of our sins, sin of omission, sin of commission. Father, we ask you tonight, God, to just cast it in the sea of forgiveness. Father, blot out our transgression. Father, cast it just for the east is from the west and the north is from the south. And Father, that it won't come up to hinder us now or years to come. So, Father, we ask you to such our heart, such our mind and our soul. Father, give us the spirit of reading and studying and passion and praying and meditating. Help us, oh God, Help to stay God. low in armor. Yes. yes, God, because low in armor is yes. the way. Yes. Father God, we are your children, yes. and you are our heavenly Father. Yes. Father, we all are standing in a need of prayer. Yes. Father, some is for one thing, yes. and oh God, some is for another. Yes. But God, you know what we need. Yes. And Father, tonight, all of us, God, need your help. Yes. So Father, we pray that you lead us and you guide us and you direct us. Help us to do the thing and say the thing and be pleased and acceptable in your sight. Yes. Father, we pray for those that are down and out, sick and shut in all over the world. Yes. Those that we know. Those that we do not know. Yes. Touch their heart. Yes. Touch their mind. Touch yes. their soul. Yes. Let them know that you are still God. Yes. Father, we pray for the president, vice president, Father, we pray for everybody that's in leadership. Yes. Father, they will lead and they will guide. Yes. Father God, we pray, God, that you will touch them in a way, Father yes. God, that you will turn things around. Yes. Father God, realize that you're still in control. Yes. God, you still got all power. Yes. Father God, we pray, God, that you will help us, God, yes. to do the thing yes. that's pleasing and accepting yes. your sight. Yes. Father, while we pray tonight, yes. we pray, Father, for the absent body of the church. Yes. Those that have drifted away. Those that have turned away. Those that just said, I don't want to do church no more. Father, let them know that you are God. And besides, you let them know. Realizing God, you're still sitting high. You're still looking low. You are still in control. So, Father God, we can't do nothing without you. So, Father, we're taking all this out in our hand and putting it in your hand. But, Father, as we leave this place, but not in your presence. Father, we're praying for travel and mercy up and down the dangerous highway. And Father, when this life is over, and we can't meet like this. Father God, we want to hear your welcome for us and well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. Now may the grace of our Lord, let it rest, root and abide with us all, in force and forevermore. Let us all say amen. 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 amen.